So thank you very much to both of you for these um, enlightening um, pictures of women and successfully partaking in building architecture and urban design as well. I think you answered a lot of my questions I had written down, so I'm going to just think up some new ones. And, um, well, that's how it is. Um, you mentioned a lot about what you showed, Christine. You showed all the women you exhibited. And you showed a wonderful statistic also on the looking back and how it changes who participates in, uh, in the award. Now, my question would be, do you know your audience? Do you have an, any idea, and that's just out of curiosity, um, how many, what is your impression at AIDES? How many visitors are actually um, men or female? Is it, is it kind of 50-50? Do you notice this? Is there any percentage where you think women are more interested in certain topics? Or do you have an idea how it is? No, I have no idea. But I clearly can say that we have also a lot of students also coming from abroad. There are trips from students from all over the world and they, from, for, from architecture, and uh, they want to see the Neue Museum of David Chipperfield and something else. And then finally they come to us. So it's a mixed group. I actually can't give you a... a uh, I can't give you a serious answer. It really depends. Sometimes we also are asked from the American Embassy, we now have a group from people from the Getty Center, and say we are somehow, we are meanwhile a bit part of the official program for people who are involved in architecture in one or the other way, so they come to us. But I cannot say if it has something to do, uh, uh, if they are women or men. How is it at the pavilion? I like your question very much because I have no idea. <laughs> and uh, how, how does it come that I'm not checking this? You know, uh, we can look at our, we will, when I go back, look at our followers in, uh, you know, all the social media that's, uh, uh, that's probably a way to say gender thing, or maybe not, but... Uh, and then for the exhibitions, I am not the one to tell, because uh, our, we do not have an exhibition space. We have an exhibition, but we do not have an exhibition space, because we have our models, the 40 shortlisted, the models are traveling across Europe, for instance, here. In, in other uh, welcoming institutions across Europe are having it's now in uh, Brussels, in Bozar, or it's about to, 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 to finish there. Um, so I don't know. But what I know is that when we organize events, I would say we have, I would say I think we have more men coming but I think I am saying this because for me personally, it's very difficult to attend the events because they happen at eight in the evening. So unless it's my event where I have to be because it's my work, I, it's very difficult for me to attend events and lectures in the city since I have a family and I have decided to have a family, therefore I, they, I priorize them yeah, you know, so it's very difficult, this timing. So very often when there are offices which are of several partners, the public relation part goes to the male partners quite often because that's something I, I perceive that when uh, try to invite a team and one of them is a lady, we try to have the lady, no, no, it's him doing the part or when they come to event and do networking, so they like to say hello to everyone. It's the male partner usually who's doing it. So, but I cannot, I, this is only an intuition. I, I will check it. Well, I want to add something. Uh, visitors, I have no idea, but we have this since 99, this Edis Network Campus with universities. And so not a single student can ask for to take part, but the university is coming with the students and the professor. And this in, in, in this case, 
we have definitely more women, more students, women students, because, uh, uh, because they were selected for this trip to Berlin. So this is different. And may I ask you a question? Um, um, I think we talked about, I was in the jury of the, at that time it was the Mies van der Rohe Award. Now I saw it's the AIU Mies van der Rohe Award, which is different. And at that time when I was in the jury, there was exactly the moment when you got the money, you was not there, uh, got the money from AU, and they told us suddenly, you cannot choose a Swiss project, because Swiss don't belong to the AU. And there were not only Herzog de Moron, there were quite a number of good Swiss projects. So at that time, <laughs> in a kind, uh, kind of being very naive, we all fight it against that, and no, we don't want that. But actually, it was clear at the end, it was a question of money. And uh, I understood it's still so, yeah? Yeah. No, Herzog de Moron <laughs> get a Britsker Prize. The prize is supported half-half by the Barcelona City Council and the European Commission and only participating countries can only be those who belong to the EU or that have the cultural agreement signed with the European Commission, which is the same agreement that goes through the Erasmus exchange program and this kind of thing. So we are having 40 countries, which are more than the 28 countries which make the EU. Then since Switzerland, is not wishing to sign this agreement, they are not. So we should all maybe try to have Switzerland in the agreement, or uh, so, but we, we, we cannot. It has, it's a prize for Europe buildings in European countries, understanding European as what I am saying now, made by European-based offices. That's, that's the, the, the part of the story we can tell. I'm sure not everybody's aware that Switzerland was actually not part of this um, award, if you don't follow it closely, so that's interesting. Thank you very much. Um, coming back to the question of finances. So how did you manage <laughs> to be successful in all the 37 years that you never gave up. Was it ever close that you uh, give up? No, we were, but we were very close to close it, <laughs> let's say like that. And uh, what we experienced and learned seriously, that to find some money, because we don't want the architects to pay the exhibitions. We had many architects who asked us, not a problem for us, we, Pay exhibitions means also rent. We don't own this space and all what facilities around. So we don't want that. And we figured out you have to be as creative to find sponsors than to create and curate an exhibition. And it's very, very different. Uh, partly in between, I was, became editor for a publisher, Ernst & Sohn, at that time, to get some extra money. I don't want to say it so uh, uh, only clear, yeah? I'm not, it's okay, yeah? We, we want to do it and we did it and it's, it's great, but this is the situation. When I was running the museum in the Netherlands, this was a very high position. I got a lot of money which a part of it could put to Edis. I do, beside what I explained in the lecture, not for money, but I got money, I do a lot of publications. I, I am in, in juries. And for each exhibition, we have some sponsors. But finally, this is not more for all our exhibitions in a year than, let's say, 
luckily 60,000. So, and, and our rent is really high. So, in each exhibition, when we did the exhibition, for example, with Daniel Liebeskind on the Jewish Museum, uh, uh, the concrete company was very much interested. And when I started in 1980, I, my <laughs> approach was, which was naive, I said, we, we are doing with our exhibition so much for the public, yeah? Please support us, but this is nonsense. Meanwhile, we learned we only can get money because one point is serious, we are accepted worldwide, so I don't know if it would work if we would start right now with a, a new initiative like that, but this more than 30 years helps us that we have a kind of reputation or integrity or whatever. So, and uh, sometimes we had an exhibition on schools uh, in, in Frankfurt, new models, this was paid by the city of Frankfurt. Yeah, we all the time have to sit together with the architect and that what can we do? And uh, my partner, Hans-Jürgen Komerl, and I'm very happy. I was great in finding extra money at the NNI, but now I'm really happy that I have not to do that. But the philosophy of getting money has changed. I offer you something which is good for you and good for us. And that's the way. We get some money but we have a catalogue, and in this catalogue you, you are mentioned, you can buy a lot of catalogues, uh, very cheap, and you give it and say, okay, I also... You could come, for some developers, it was interesting, to come from the, in the newspapers, from the Wirtschaftsteil, business part, to the cultural part, was also an aspect. And we had a lot of exhibitions and still have with China because we started in uh, 15 years ago. We did the first <laughs> exhibition on Chinese architects, uh, including Ai Weiwei. He was never abroad and all the others as well. But we get support, but they were all first shown because at that year, it was the first year that Chinese architect can work independently as an office by himself and not for the government. E every time I can give you a long list, <laughs> I would laugh, and uh, in every time it's different. So uh, the last show before we had was this incredible project of Dilla Scofidio Renfro on the chat, I don't know, who of you know that? Um, this was nearly a miracle because they, uh, Liz designed the exhibition and she was very special. She wanted a screen from eight meter, yeah? Costs enormous, but she found the money. She did not pay it by herself because it's a great project. Or um, it's every time different. And if, when I go through the projects, may, maybe you can ask me, uh, then I the, have an idea. The way, yeah, stop tomorrow. Now. <laughs> stop now. Okay, that's the way. There's no clear way. You have to be, you have to be inventive every time. Thank you. I think that, seriously, I think we all struggle with this. And <laughs> yes. And uh, I admire your persistency and your success over 37 years. How is it at the pavilion? Not for the price, but how is it done by the pavilion finance-wise? We, we, uh, yeah, we do have a, a part public funds, but uh, we, we need the private funds as well. So we are partnering with uh, different companies which kind of aim to support us also having 30 years of history and a name kind of help in that position. Um, it's also helping the fact of having this part of the public funds, because then somehow, you know, you will be able to do your minimum 
And then whatever extra you can get is just for the better or for a new project, you know? But not having to struggle for every day of your life uh, brings kind of a quietness of spirit which uh, helps programming or this way. But still it's difficult because every time you have to go, tell the company, explain the story, you know. Um, also, uh, different countries have different policies. For instance, we, do, we are lucky because we do have internet. I mean, not, we are supported by companies from different places in the world. And then sometimes we see culture of long time supporting, like they get engaged for a program for two years or for four years. And other times you have to go exhibition by exhibition for them. Can I have something for these next three months, please? And that is kind of exhausting. But yeah, it's part of uh, our uh, daily life. We are also supported by the ticket entrance to the uh, pavilion because those who are not students have to of course pay for it and we have our little bookshop who's also providing incomes so that's kind of our we also have a shop mies.com so you can buy online you don't have to come and buy so but we have to invent ways of uh, financing yeah it sounds a bit maybe like... with some a little addition we discussed a lot uh, if we should ask for entrance, I mentioned it. And I think it's totally okay who asks for entrance, it's necessary. But somehow we started differently. We started that we want something from the public, we want their interest, and not the other way around. And so we have, ex we have a specialty symposia at the campus, which are booked out two hours after we have announced it, because the people are interesting, uh, or we have the Senate uh, lecture in December. Okay, but we are, we don't want, I accept everything, uh, everybody who asks for money, but we don't want to change finally. <laughs> we made it for so many years, so we said we should survive <laughs> without this entrance. Excellent, now let's move over to some fun part away from the finances. Um, before I open the floor to the public, I have one more question. Because you're both in the, in the business of finding new trends or sniff, having the sniff, which is really nice. And what are you currently interested in? What do you think is going to be the next trend, or not, if not trend, or just really what, what is interesting for you right now? What do you see? happening next and what you think, oh, this is interesting, let's follow this. Um, well, I'll speak from both a mix of what I am personally interested in and what I've seen in the last process of the Mies van der Rohe award. So, I, and also what we have heard today. Um, I think uh, that users of architecture are in the center of the discussion. We have gone through too many years of architecture, very self-referential and not very strategic, but more on the object. And that has put the architects on a role of someone who comes at the end and makes the decoration. And then that made us superfluous. And we, are, we were not in the decision-making process. And now that architecture and architects are very much focused on the people who inhabit their architecture, are proposing strategies or issues that come much earlier in the construction process. So they are creating a dialogue with politicians, with planners, at the very, a very much more relevant moment of the process. So I think this of thinking of the people, of the users, 
will paradoxically put the architects much more in a decision-making position. Yeah? So uh, that's kind of very much what I see, strategies and how to interact in the life of uh, the cities and the, the people more than you know, formal or statistic discussions which are valuable, but when they are the only thing, they become irrelevant for those who are not architects, and then we are lost. That's what I see. Thank you. What about you, Christine? Yeah, it's not so easy. No. Uh, definitely not. But um, there are some issues we are interested in beside really to support as much as possible an upcoming generation worldwide. This is difficult, and we talked about money. So we can do it now much easier with our campus, uh, and not having a big exhibition, but having themes we can deepen in the campus, and uh, architects and others who talk have a chance to explain their concepts. So we have one and in the campus linked to the exhibitions, which is very important. I think if we, if we don't have the money anymore to uh, do the campus, we would quit the whole thing. Because exhibition and campus means lectures before, discussions before, uh, linked to the theme we are exhibiting, is really to deepen the story. And this is really important. So, but sometimes we do it without exhibitions. I think one theme we did with exhibition and campus is really um, what happens with museums, what happens with places uh, communicating art or whatever, how they, uh, which responsibility they have with the community, see so all these uh, digital informations, uh, it is so extremely interesting, and we had a symposium, and we showed a lot of uh, projects at the last Biennale in Vienna on this issue, and uh, there happens a lot, much more than we can expect. Or what Peter told at lunch or whatever, uh, the, uh, the partnership is going uh, with government to maybe to build something or to promote to build something. So it's really part of the create creativity. And it's very important, and that's, we have a lot of exhibitions, that it's uh, no longer important to have museums only to show the elite, the wonderful projects, but to communicate. It's a long story. But uh, this was very interesting, and this is an issue. Also, the last exhibition on the Shed, whenever you go to New York, it's totally crazy. Yeah? A moving, partly moving museum for the public with places for production and everything. I don't want to go deeper into it. But nobody had expected that maybe a year or two ago before architects did it. And finally, it makes a business plan. Otherwise, they were not allowed to build it. So that sometimes is the story of architects. So uh, museums, what happened in this case, in future, in different countries. There are museums for refugees. It's not only about art or architecture. We had a show uh, on last year, which was fantastic, on China, also 16 Chinese muse museums from 16 Chinese architects. Peter, you all and the others, you know them. They don't need us anymore. And there was a museum for the workers living outside in, of Beijing in a big factory, and they built their own museums to create their own identity. So, and everybody of these workers put a piece <laughs> in this museum. So, we follow that. Another really important theme, and then I stop, is periphery. Different, but also very interesting. We have a lot of uh, symposia on periphery, what is going on there, what is happening. It's not, that f not so funny, but it's uh, really important, and I don't know what comes next. Thank you very much. Now, uh, I would like 
to ask you if you have any questions to Anna or Christine or anything you want to know from them. No question. One more about. I mean, just ask one more question. I think you answered so many uh, aspects of your work and about. I mean, I also sit here. I'm, I mean, I work for this museum now, and I'm really happy to be here and to communicate about architecture. I think that's what really is the most vital thing we have on this table right now right in front of us, with us, and I think we should keep doing this. Anything you want to add, Christine? I have a wonderful add, story on your uh, Mies van der Rohe pavilion. Can I tell it? Yes. <laughs> okay, yes, two stories, but I start with one. And women. Uh, Saha Hadi got the award. We were there. It was a lover, but it was glamorous. That's the way she wanted. Yeah. So, and then the stones, you know, at the outside, uh, actually she got stuck with her high heels. And she was crying. I was next to her, I was, she was crying. I got stuck with my high heels. And I think 20 men came to help her out <laughs> of this. This was one. And the other one, it was when David Chipperfield got the Miss Van Der Award. We came, it was smelling somehow strange. And I said, what happened? And there is this buzzer, and there was milk in it. And I said, what, what happened? So this was an art installation, installation of Ai Weiwei. He put milk in the buzzer, and it smells not very nicely, and, and even every day more. So this was my special experience, and I like both. <laughs> Anything you want to add? No, yeah, that's, yeah, I, 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 that was a nice story. I knew this one about Sahadi. Just to end up with, with her, when I was about to come here, someone of my team um, made me review the interview because we, we have interviewed all the uh, Mies van der Rohe Award winners like a nice conversation, let's say, more than an interview. And then she was, uh, in that interview, absolutely complaining about all these questions for her, if she was a diva, or if she is a diva, or are you a diva, or are you? And she was so tired of getting, in, in the interview she manifests her, so tired or always getting this same word, diva, who was never for cheaper field, or nobody never asked Foster if he's a diva. And, and she always had to handle with this, and she was deeply complaining about. But uh, yeah, probably to succeed in, a, we were discussing about this before, to succeed in an alpha male world, you sometimes have to behave like an alpha woman, and alpha woman or diva. <laughs> So, but which yeah. Brings next, which brings us to the next panel. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you.